Okay, um, we're going to talk about scanning raw. Um, and scanning raw is the method that I would prefer that everyone use to make their scans. Um, the idea behind scanning raw is that basically we just load the negative into the negative carrier, make sure that it's completely dust free, and also going through the scanner uh, straight so we don't have to do any tilting when we crop later in Photoshop. Um, and basically we just run it through with all of the controls turned off. So basically all this stuff is not really going to matter very much. And we're going to kind of set it to its default for the particular size of negative that we're going to scan. And uh, we're going to scan it raw. That means none of this software, none of these controls got applied. And then uh, after it gets saved in the raw file format, which is 3F, you'll see that in just a moment, um, we're going to reopen the raw scan using the flex color software and hopefully at another computer besides a scanning station and one with a calibrated monitor we're going to really take our time and try to get this thing as color corrected as we possibly can because we're trying you know our goal is to give birth to a file that is has the very best color and contrast that we can possibly uh, you know arrange um, so that we don't have to do any manipulations in Photoshop Okay, so um, I'm going to pretend that I've already done the preview. Uh, if I was to actually scan this thing, I would just hit the preview button. Once I hit preview, um, I would then um, go to the 3F button. Okay, now here is the 3F button. Okay, that's the raw file format, and they're all titled 3F. I'm going to title this one Ford Panels. And here are the controls you need to set to scan raw. For color negative and also for black and white, you're just going to select color negative. S setup should be negative standard RGB. Okay, do not add any profiles here. Set the frame 4 or 5, uh, crop full size. Down here, the only thing that we need to worry about is to make sure that that's set at 100%. Okay, all of this stuff will um, we will actually use the controls once we. Uh, reintroduce this file into flex color but for right now if we see 463 as maximum size for 4x5 that sounds fine the output resolution uh, look, we're not going to worry about that either okay so the only thing I'm really setting is color negative and negative RGB 4x5 full size then I click scan button okay and it'll take you know for 4x5 10 to 15 minutes to scan just just the same amount of it as a regular time but when I get done okay I will have a file and you can see it right here. Uh, Ford artifacts, Ford panels. Okay, this is the one I scanned before. You see the color is not very good, but there is my file, and there's the 3F. Okay, that is the uh, proprietary file format for scanning RAW. Okay, now you'll be able to see this preview here. Okay, but that was from our actual scanning experience. The idea is that you probably come in and scan three or four negatives, however many you're going to scan in that particular uh, session, and save them to the desktop or save them to your hard drive. Okay, and then once you're done scanning, uh, and let's let's maybe even pretend we're on a different uh, computer, we're going to really take our time now, and I need to reintroduce my files into the FlexColor software. So uh, in this case, my files are on the desktop. The way that we reintroduce our files into uh, FlexColor is to click the thumbnail button. Okay, once you do that, you can see that there is um, an image on the desktop. There's my Ford panels. Okay, if you don't see anything here, what you might want to do is come to this little menu and it's the choose locations menu. Okay, so if you don't see it, you can hunt for your hard drive or hunt for the desktop. Once you uh, are in the folder on your on your hard drive, or if you're on the desktop, you'll be able to see the images. Okay, and all we do now is just double click, and you'll see that the preview changed. And now I'm actually seeing my raw uh, image, and I'm getting ready to process it using the regular FlexColor software. Okay. Um, one of the things that's great about scanning raw is that it's going to take a minute for this to digest, but our uh, preview has a lot more uh, detail to it, okay? Um, makes it a lot easier to come in and pick a nice clean color sampler point, okay? So once we reintroduce this thing, our raw file, into the flex scanning software, it's uh, simply the same software and same procedure that you would use from the regular uh, scanning uh, instructions and the regular scanning video. Okay, I'm going to go over that in really brief form. Okay, take my cropping rectangle, put it inside the image, and I'm going to select my profile for my film. And in this case, I'm using Portra 160NC. 
uh, RGB 16 bit and I'm going to hit my auto button okay and I'm making sure that the cropping rectangle is inside the image once I'm done color correcting I'll drag it outside okay but for now we want it to want the auto preview to work correctly so we're completely inside the image. I hit auto preview it's not like, oh there we go, that's a little better. And first thing I'm going to do is pull up levels. Now this is not a very contrasty image but with most contrasty images, rather with all images, I'm going to come here to my white point and make that safe, three or four points to the right. And most of us I think could benefit from doing the same thing with our shadow slider. This particular image doesn't really need it. Now I'm going to set the midpoint as best I can using the gamma slider and the levels dialog. Here we are in global uh, levels position. And at this point it will also pay to come to our um, curves and add a little tiny bit of contrast perhaps, a little bit of brightness and do a, a kind of a nice fine tune preliminary tonal adjustment with the global RGB curve. Okay, once I've got that done, I am going to uh, start color balancing. And for this particular example, I think it would be a really good idea to color balance by the numbers, or I think it's always a good idea to color balance by the numbers. And this particular image might be a good example in that um, whoever shot this picture was smart or uh, whatever word you might want to use, but uh, I included a uh, grayscale uh, patch. So I actually have a nice uh, really neutral highlight, midtone, and shadow. And in this particular image, here are our color sampler points, eyedropper 31. And you can see I've got um, nice uh, numbers for highlight. Here are my shadow numbers. Those could go down a little bit. And also here's uh, you know very nice midtone. So let's pull out levels again. I'm going to make everyone balance to be 247. Okay, or as close as I can. Uh, you guys probably know already that the blue channel has the least amount of information and we're often trying to match a number that the blue channel gives us, 233. I'm going to change my numbers to 233. Okay, so the number's there within a point or two. Let's go down here. I want the image to be darker, so I'm going to choose the lower number in the red channel, 65, and I'm going to make all the other channels pretty much match that number, 65. Okay, you notice the red change. Let's make it 60 now, and that's pretty close. We still got a ton of blue, and getting in the neighborhood. All right, that's all within a point or two as well. I still got way too much blue in the midtone, so I take my midtone blue slider, and that was a little too much. Okay, and a little bit of red, and we're looking pretty good. All right, so now if I was happy with the overall uh, numerical color balance, I might also want to take this moment to use my eyes and just look at this thing and say, wow, to me it still looks a little too red. And I've probably mentioned this to you before in class or maybe in the other video, um, but I think the profiles made for us uh, by the Imicon company are a little bit happy in that they are oversaturated in the red uh, the red color and also the yellow color. So here is a sort of uh, cross-section between the hue saturation tool and also the selective color tool from Photoshop. And we're going to use it in a very simple way. I would suggest that you don't use the eyedropper. Um, get in trouble. Here's what we're going to do is we're going to come to the red, uh, select the red color within red, and let's knock out about eight points. And let's do the same thing to yellow. Okay, now you know this might vary a little bit from image to image, okay? But you can see that tamed some of this wild, crazy red. Now I might also do one final color correction uh, with the individual curve channels. I still think we're a little tiny bit red here, mostly in the midtones. So I'm going to go to the individual red channel, pull that down a little bit. I think we're also a little bit yellow in the same spots. So I'm going to add just a little bit of blue. Okay, so we're getting in the neighborhood and one of the things I want to start watching at this point is if I make these corrections with curves, am I correcting an area or am I reintroducing a shift into one of the other areas? Okay, this would be the kind of uh, 
uh, incident that would tell us that, okay, I'm done with my global color correction. It's time to save the rest of these color corrections for Photoshop and we can actually make selections. Okay, I'm pretty happy. Well, let's pretend I'm pretty happy. I'd probably spend a little, quite a bit more time actually and get this uh, a lot closer. But the last thing to do is go to uh, Setup, make sure that our color language is correct. Flex tight here, Adobe RGB there. And most importantly, we do not want to sharpen in the scanner, so I'm going to uncheck Apply. Nothing should have Apply here. Once I've done that, I can now hit Save. And as I save this, okay, I'm no longer going to be making the 3F file format. I'm going to be making a TIFF file. And uh, let's just call it Ford Artifacts uh, ORGB. And I would hit save, and that would uh, then be saved to my desktop. And then I would open that up in Photoshop and start my regular color, man color uh, correction workflow in Photoshop. Probably start making some, some selections after I've done the neat image and also the sharpening. All right, so that's basic overview, overview of scanning using the uh, raw file format.